Many thanks for sitting down with us. I have a first question about a very global uh, topic, not on Earth, but in, in, in the sky, um, because you have just discussed global governance in the sky. Um, what was your main point on stage right now, just right now? Uh, the space is much, much closer to us, to people in, in the world, and most of the people don't know it because so many services are arriving to us from the space. Almost everything, navigation, uh, satellite possibility, uh, television, internet, everything coming from the space, people don't know it. Space became the new media for the world to expand its own possibilities and services, and therefore the space became to be now to be much more uh, used by many countries, many people, and so as well, the possibility is to go to the space by satellites began to be much more friendly, much more cheaper. If 20 years ago, just Russia and United States could launch a satellite to the world, to the space today, I said it today in my discussion, in eight uh, high schools in Israel, they build their own satellite and launch it to the space and it's working already in the build the communication station with them, which shows you that it became to be easily to anyone. And today already we see that private companies are building today, launching missiles and spacecraft, much more cheaper, much more efficient than NASA. And therefore NASA is using them in order to do so. The space is open also for us a large possibilities. We can look at the, at the earth in different classes, for example, and bring the the example that Israel with France launched to the sky two satellites, Venus 1, Venus 2, which can s look at the world and get from it 120 different radiation, which give a possibility to scientists to see what's going on with water on the land, what's going on with the ice, what's going on with agriculture, what's going on with pollution. We can, we can observe everything from everything, space. Exactly, and act accordingly. Because people who get this information can use it in order to act accordingly and do things. Thirdly, the space also became a place in which create possibilities for countries to protect themselves. As I said before, if today, how can you protect yourself in space? How, how does your country do that? What is the ambition of Israel? I'll in give space? you two examples. One example is the arrow, <coughs> arrow missile. We have protect ourselves from missiles which can come over us from Iran or from different places. And therefore we create the Aero 1, 2, 3 and now the 4 version is, was out. This missile can go out of the atmosphere to the space and intercept any missile, ballistic missile, which came from Iran or from anybody else. Until today we have no other way to do it. Now I saw also, uh, also tale about the possibility of opening now, operating now, which Israel tried and was successful what we call the light shield, which is a laser weapon, which by a laser machine that had been developed in Israel, we can intercept any mortar, any missile, any airplane, any drone, just by light ray. And the new thing, the ni nice thing about it, that we do it by light, in matter of fact, by laser, which flies in the, uh, in the speed of 360,000 kilometers a second, which means if you have one laser system, you can intercept anything that's coming to you just by pressing a, pressing a button. Okay, and you get it, intercept it. I show it the demonstration by video how we did it. Yes, how I've seen your it. video. Yeah, a lot of innovation in that in this field. Exactly. And in the future, maybe it will be possible to put a satellite in the sky. Let's say we can put it geo satellite, which will stand on Israel all the time. Okay, we do it by sending a satellite that, matter in matter of fact fly exactly according to the speed of the earth and therefore he stands all the time in the same place over Israel and on this satellite we can put a laser okay. beam like that so everything come to Israel would be intercepted. So we're supervised right now, now as we s we're talking. Exactly. Um, maybe a last question about the World Policy Conference. This is the 15th edition already. Yeah. You've been to several other editions. Uh, what makes this one different or what makes this conference different? I've been in 11 out of the 15 and I love it every time I come because it creates a place in which people from all over the world, 
from all the continents are meeting each other, changing ideas, talking to each other, explaining things, creating corporations. I don't recognize many uh, institutions like that which can create it day by day, time by time, every year. And I say we have in Hebrew said kol akavod, kol akavod, it means all the honor to Thierry de Montbaillet Mont that he keeping doing it every year, raising the funds for it, and do it at a very high level. People love to come here to talk to each other. And really, I met so many friends from all over the world, which I never met them if I were not in this uh, organization. And I'm glad that it is exist. I think if it will not exist, we should invent it. And I think Thierry invented it, and he's very, very successful. I is like it, it. Is it different, as we're in Abu Dhabi right now, is it different to be here uh, in the Arabic world as... It's a new, the fact that we can arrive to Abu Dhabi today and other places in the world, we have been, I've been in Morocco, in Monaco, in many other places, Switzerland, etc. I think that uh, it shows you that the world is open. If somebody knows how to work with them, you can arrive everywhere. And it's good that we're doing it from place to place. So I have the impression not only from the discussion, but also from the place we're arriving in. I'm glad to be in Abu Dhabi, you know, for years we didn't, couldn't come to Abu Dhabi or to Emirates at all. Now we have peace between Israel and Emirates, and therefore we can come easily, we, even we don't need visa when we arrive here. That's all changed. I, this, uh, this operation, the global governance, the activity of our of, uh, WPC, is creating, in my opinion, a unity of the world and give the possibility of people really to change ideas and to see that problems are not unified uniquely to certain country, but they share by all over the world. And maybe we learn from each other how to tackle with them, which is good. People creating ideas, you know, ideas is creating at last results. The fact that I meet here a lot of people from different places and any time, every time I've been, I met a new people, which is fantastic. Today I met the Prime Minister of Mongolia, we became friends. Okay. And I listened from him about Mongolia, which I knew nothing about it before. It's fascinating, the, the fact that he told me about, and also the, opera, the possibilities which can be opened between Israel and in, uh, Mongolia. That is fantastic. Thank you for this. The pleasure. <laughs>